Welcome back. Now you want to increase the number of people that can watch your recordings. You can do that by placing subtitles on your video. Now inside of your editing screen, you're going to notice that if you click this link, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to add a transcript of some kind. Once you choose the language, you basically have three ways of being able to create a transcript. You can upload a file, you can transcribe it and auto sync it, or in other words, you can listen to the video and then you can type out your transcript or you can type out your subtitles in this area. Now, in most cases, you're going to use your auto transcribe. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to your video manager and the video manager will show you all of your videos. You're going to choose the one that you are working with. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of the videos that we know has voice and we're going to click this drop down arrow. And what you're going to notice here is that there is a link here that says subtitles forward slash closed caption. We're going to click that link. What's going to happen is, is that now the subtitles and captions will be added. We're going to choose the language and we're going to set the language. And what you'll notice is that the subtitles and closed caption has already been published and added to our video. And basically now when the person watches our video, they're going to see a transcript going across the end of the screen. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now we can also use cards in much the same way as we're using in screens to promote our other content. So if we click this link that says cards, that'll take us to another similar screen. And what's going to happen is we're going to need to pick some places inside of our video where we're going to give the viewers a brief glimpse of a link they can click to watch some of our other content. So for example, we can decide that at the 11 minute point, we're going to add a card. We're going to make that card one of our videos, and then we're going to click on the video. What we're going to do then is we're going to write in a custom message. So in this case, we might write in, and then we're going to click create card. Now what's going to happen is when this point comes in the video, your viewers are going to see this information piece and all they'll need to do is they click on it. They're then going to be able to click on this card and then click this link to see what you have given them to click on. You can add in some other cards. For example, maybe further into the video, what you're going to do is you're going to click add another card and it's going to be another video. And then you're going to click the video. You're going to write in a custom message. And then you're going to click create card. And then at this point in the video, your viewers are going to see this area. They click on it. They're then going to have this information where they can click and go to another video. So cards obviously have more to them than all of those things. However, if you're trying to get people to see more of your content, then you'll definitely want to use cards and then exercise the capacity you have to drive people to some of your other content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, something that you can do to promote your previous live streams is to provide an end screen that gives viewers clickable access to them on a video that they are watching. So in order to do that, you're going to go up to your creator studio and you're going to open up the edit screen in one of your videos. Once you get there, you're then going to click end screen and annotations. Now YouTube is going to come to the very end of your video where you can place in your end screen or samples of your other videos or live streams. So for example, on the end screen, what we can do is click add element. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a video or a playlist. And we can do any number of things. We can either choose the videos, we can choose the most recent upload, or we can make the best choice for the viewer. And in this case, it's YouTube making that selection. So in most cases, we're just going to choose the video or a playlist. In this case, we're going to choose the video, and this is how it's going to appear at the end of your video. 
we can move this video so that it appears in another part of the video just in case this would block something that they're going to see at the end. We can also do is we can use other templates. So for example, what we can do is we can click use template. In this case, what we can say is we want to have two videos on our end screen. And so when we do that, we're then going to click select. And then this is going to replace the current end screen with the selected template. That means then that now what we need to do is we need to choose two different videos that are going to be part of the end screen. So we click inside, get one of the videos we want. Now when we do that, then YouTube is going to select the other video. You can go back to your template and you can actually create other views, including four videos. Now in this particular case, we're going to replace our current screen. We're then going to choose our videos. Once we do that, then YouTube will choose the other three that are going to be part of your end screen. So basically, now we've given clickable access to our other content as the individual is watching our recording. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. You demonstrated the same way that you used a thumbnail YouTube when you were works. promoting your live the question stream. is, you can promote the recording have a live also broadcast with the how same or a similar it. thumbnail. Now you may already recognize that and all you need to do is to watch go your live stream, stream edit your while also video. seeing all of the other videos and then you'll see here at the bottom that there the platform is an area that says may not thumbnail your you'll do that in station will. Button. So it's necessary to look at a number of tools that you will then upload your image within YouTube. Once you do that, all you need to do is to click the word out about your live stream and so in this and then course, your thumbnail we'll will be the front of your, of your video when you go inside and we'll look at some of those manager, tools that you have and you can see it here so that you and you look at it on your channel make the most of them and get the maximum and you'll see it here. watching your live stream and you so do want to make sure that you have your customization tools. available mainly to show you it makes your video easy to use and it makes it more also take a look at some of the success factors in making your live stream visible and attractive okay so with that thanks and i will see and we'll take a look at some of the enhancement tools you can do with your video now in the same way that you used a thumbnail usable and widespread your live stream you can promote the recording thanks and i'll see you within the same or a similar thumbnail welcome back now we can also use cards in much the same way as we're using in screens to promote our other content. So if we click this link that says cards, that'll take us to another similar screen. And what's going to happen is we're going to need to pick some places inside of our video where we're going to give the viewers a brief glimpse of a link they can click to watch some of our other content. So for example, we can decide that at the 11 minute point, we're going to add a card we're going to make that card one of our videos, and then we're going to click on the video. What we're going to do then is we're going to write in a custom message. So in this case, we might write in, and then we're going to click Create Card. And what's going to happen is when this point comes in the video, your viewers are going to see this information piece. And all they'll need to do is they click on it. They're then going to be able to click on this card and then click this link to see what you have given them to click on. You can add in some other cards. For example, maybe further into the video, what you're going to do is you're going to click add another card and it's going to be another video. And then you're going to click the video. You're going to write in a custom message. And then you're going to click create card. And then at this point in the video, your viewers are going to see this area. They click on it. They're then going to have this information where they can click and go to another video. So cards obviously have more to them than all of those things. However, if you're trying to get people to see more of your content, then you'll definitely want to use cards and then exercise the capacity you have to drive people to some of your other content. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, inside of your info and settings area, you do have a link that says advanced settings, and we're going to click on that right now. 
and some may increase our viewership. And there are some things that you may want to test. For example, if you did have a chat during your live sessions, one of the things you can do is you can allow others to see that chat if you think that would keep them interested in your video. Now you can make a decision about allowing other people to embed the video or not embed the video because again, what you want people to do, is you want people to come back and see your other videos. So again, this is something that you'll want to determine on a video by video basis. And in some cases, you may or may not want to make your video statistics available. Again, in some cases, knowing what these statistics are and being able to access them on the watch page will, in some cases, make some people want to watch and others not. So again, another thing that you'll want to monitor and decide and test. And of course, you will want to determine whether or not you want to allow comments by your video or not. Now, in some cases, this might bring an element to the video that you don't want. Or in other cases, giving people the opportunity to comment on what your content is will invite more activity around the video and then make it more searchable. So again, all of these are things you're going to want to determine by a video by video basis and test to see how they fit with your particular business model. You don't want to just leave the default settings as they are. You want to think about how they're going to impact what it is you're trying to do. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, when you are doing your live broadcast, you're going to be able to come to this area where your link is. You're going to be able to grab that link. Now, this link will embed the stream inside of your social media accounts, and you'll want to do this in a certain way for Facebook in particular. Now, assuming that you have a group or a page, one way to do this would be to create a Facebook event and we're just going to click the create button. We're then going to find that event inside of our page. You'll notice then that there is a comment area. So what you can do is you can take your link and you're going to post it as a comment and you're going to click OK and what you're going to see is that you then have a preview. You want to instruct people to click the preview and they'll then be able to watch your live stream. Now it won't be enabled for sound by default, they'll need to enable the sound so you may want to give them instruction to do that. They will also be able to embed the stream on LinkedIn in the very same way but this will be in their status. Now by posting to Twitter all you'll have is your direct link. So they'll be clicking this link, but they'll actually be taking the path back to YouTube Live. So this will not be an embedded stream. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, when you are doing your live broadcast, you're going to be able to come to this area where your link is. You're going to be able to grab that link. Now, this link will embed the stream inside of your social media accounts. And you'll want to do this in a certain way for Facebook in particular. Now, assuming that you have a group or a page, one way to do this would be to create a Facebook event. And we're just going to click the Create button. We're then going to find that event inside of our page. You'll notice then that there is a comment area. So what you can do is you can take your link and you're going to post it as a comment and you're going to click OK and what you're going to see is that you then have a preview. You want to instruct people to click the preview and they'll then be able to watch your live stream. Now it won't be enabled for sound by default, they'll need to enable the sound so you may want to give them instruction to do that. They will also be able to embed the stream on LinkedIn in the very same way but this will be in their status. Now by posting to Twitter, all you'll have is your direct link. So they'll be clicking this link, but they'll actually be taking the path back to YouTube Live. So this will not be an embedded stream. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, now before you get into strategic tools such as social media 
and search engine optimization, it's a good idea to understand the tools that YouTube has given you to make sure that your video is widely distributed. And in this course, that is what we have focused on. You now know how to use your direct shareable link and to make it available in those places where people might see and join your live stream. You now know how to download your video in MP4 format and upload it to other locations. And we've reviewed all of the channel promotional tools, whether or not you're talking about your channel art, your links, or even your channel trailer. We also discussed how you can create your playlist and make them available on your channel homepage. And we've discussed the video post-production process. Everything from blurring information to thumbnails, in-screen, cards, subtitles, playlists, and your advanced settings. We also discuss adding audio to your video as well as working with your subscribers. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course. Welcome back. Now, if you go inside of your creator studio and you go into the channel link and you click on the status and features, one of the things you're going to want to do is scroll down here to the bottom. And you're going to notice that there is a way for you to be able to get a custom URL. Now, currently, this channel that we're using for for the sake of this tutorial course is ineligible for a custom URL. However, it is a good idea to know what the requirements are. So we're going to click this link where it says here. And what you're going to notice is that this is going to give you the ability to give you a name that you can give to your YouTube URL instead of the long ugly one that we were working with earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and then we're going to click general eligibility requirements. You're going to notice that your channel needs to have at least 100 or more subscribers. It needs to be at least 30 days old and it needs to have an uploaded photo as a channel icon and uploaded channel art. Now more than likely you have the last two already done. The only thing that you may be lacking are the 100 subscribers. So that is going to be the thing that you're going to need to work on in order to have a more attractive URL and even more than it being attractive for it to be memorable. Until that time, you'll need to use the channel ID that you have as well as the user ID. Okay, so with that, thanks and I'll see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, depending on what your live stream is and what you're trying to do, Another part of the post-production process may be to add music. And you can do that inside of your video editing screen and going to this link that says audio. And when you do that, what you're going to notice is that you can add or replace audio inside of your video. Now, you're not going to be able to add anything from your personal computer to your existing video, but you will be able to add music that is already available on YouTube as either background music or to replace certain audio. So for example, one of the things we can do is we can choose some kind of audio. And if you want to search for a particular genre of music, you can do that by writing this genre in this area and then you'll get all of the tracks that are going to be related to it. And you can listen to the track by clicking any of the links. You can determine which ones you actually want. You can also sort by the genre that you want. You can do that here. And then once you find the background music that you'd like to place inside of your video, you can then place that video here. Now, one of the things that you can do, you get to the end of your video and you have your end card showing, those are good times to actually add in the music. So what we would do here is we would then click add to video of the track that we want to add. We would then pull it to the point in the video where we want it to begin and end. And then we would determine how we want the video to sound. So for example, if we want to favor the music, we would then keep the cursor at this end. If we want it to be background music and we would want our voice to play, then we'll move the cursor more to this end. And then once we finalize our changes, we would then click save changes. You'll then see the edit of your video is in progress. And when it's complete, then your video will be ready with new audio. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, obviously, some of the things you're going to do 
to encourage people to watch your live stream and your recordings is going to be a little more manual. And to find those ways, what you're going to do is go inside of the community link on your channel and you can then click inside of your subscriber link. And what you're going to find are all of the people that have subscribed to your channel who do not have privacy settings indicating that their subscriptions can't be known. You can sort those subscriptions here in this link so you can look at those that are most popular. And these are individuals that you can choose to contact or you can choose to subscribe to their channel. Of course, in order to contact them, all you would need to do is to click on their channel. And obviously what you're trying to do is you're trying to influence those. Obviously what you're trying to do is to find those that have influence. And of course, you can initiate a collaboration or something more suitable for both you and that party. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video.